Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today I'm going to be bringing you some interesting gameplay that takes place with the Tier 6 German Premium Battleship, the Scharnhorst. This took place on the Sleeping Giant map in a Dominion type game, uh, game mode. And what we're doing here is I am playing my Scharnhorst aggressively. I like to play my Scharnhorst aggressively a lot. And uh, it just makes the uh, ship... It's more fun to play that way, plus the ship is capable of doing that. Now we're starting over here on the uh, southwestern side of this map. And we are going to continue down the south side. There'll be a Mutsu B with us. And we're going to go down to around the Cape. And we'll decide when we get there whether or not we're going to go inside uh, Cap A or if we're going to go around to the other side to see if there's any other ships there. Now I believe in this match we end up uh, taking about uh, four ships, I believe. And like I mentioned previously, this is a previous uh, played match that I'm simply doing the audio over top of afterwards, as I remember it. Okay, we're going to get this uh, Sharn Horse pointed in the right direction over there, and we're going to get it up to speed. We can get this one up here, I think, to about 30, 30 31 knots to get us into a good spot. And uh, we're going to make good use of the torpedoes in this match. That's for sure. All right, now, the original Sharn Horse, you know what, I... I find, you know, and I think the original Scharnhorst guns, they, they, to me, they sound different than the Black Friday edition uh, Scharnhorst, but you never know. Anyways, we got the Sharni moving here, and we're going to overtake this uh, Mutsu. Well, we should, <laughs> but we are catching up to it. And we'll be able to compare the length of these two ships once they're side by side in a moment or two. As you can see, we're going to be touching up to its stern there any momentarily. And for some reason, our little Mutsu buddy there decided to uh, fire one torp on the island and the other torp in open water. Yeah, the problem with the Mutsu B with its torpedoes, it's, it's got such a narrow uh, torpedo spread that uh, you pretty much can't use it unless you're flat broadside. And that's only in emergency situations if you end up getting into brawling. Uh, we're going to speed by this Mutsu B. You can see, I think the uh, Sharni there was a little bit longer than the Mutsu B, where the, and, and more narrow. Kind of. I think the Mutsu B is one of those old-style fat body ships, right? Anyways, let's keep moving here. And our first engagement is going to be with a, uh, a cruiser and a battleship at the same time. Close-in fighting. That's what's going to happen. And that's what I love to do with the, uh, with the Sharni. And you can see that in action here. We'll be using our torps and guns momentarily and that's why I love uh, playing the Sharn Horse so much is because you can play, you can be aggressive in the ship and you can do well when you're being aggressive with it and it's so much fun to take this thing into a brawl now I do have um, the Sharn Horse commander the new uh, Azure Lane Sharn Horse commander is on board here she's level 15 legendary level 1 and that gives her a maxed out um, skill level 2 which gives her 6.7 kilometer torps which is kind of nice to have I'd like them a little longer than that but you know that's still better than nothing and I believe my two inspirations on here I believe I've got Cunningham on here and I think I've got Hipper because they're gonna give it a little bit of a uh, set I think we got 6.7 kilometer um, uh, secondaries on here And of course, it can go a lot further if you really were to push this into a secondary build with auto. But uh, 6.7 gives a nice little uh, breathing room there. All right, so we'd be momentarily weird. Now, the reason why I go in this way is because I noticed there was a spotter plane. And the spotter plane is hanging out around the other side of the island. So therefore, there has to be a ship or ships over there. So we're going to hightail it around the corner here at speed. We're going to tuck it in close in case there's torpedoes coming down here. And sure enough, there's a Nuremberg. And beside the Nuremberg is a Bayern. So we are going to duke it out with these two. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to dodge these torpedoes here. And we successfully did that. We applied our first shot. Now, we're going to throw the torpedoes at the Nuremberg here. In the hopes that we can take it out with an entire torpedo spread. And then we are going to go after this Byron with the other torpedoes. 
perfect setup for torpedoes here. And there we got one torpedo strike on the Nuremberg. So we're now going to take our uh, turrets back around. Our secondaries are just massively engaging here. We got uh, a bunch of hits on the uh, Bayern with torpedoes, taking them down to less than half. We just sank the Nuremberg there. We are on fire. We are just racking up the secondary hits here. 81 already, I believe. And then we're going to wait for the broadside. We're going to take the shot. We're going to knock the Bayern down even more. Now we're going to angle towards him. We're now over a hundred secondary hits in this first engagement here. Like I said, it's so much fun playing the Scharnhorst aggressively. You know, lots of times you get sunk, but lots of times magic stuff happens and it's nothing but fun. We'll cut across the stern. Get those Byron shells to get uh, bounce off our hull. And lo and behold, we get the Byron. There's our first two right there, and the first two in the match. We're gonna put this fire out, and we're not too much uh, worse for wear there. We only lost about a uh, a third of our hit points there. With the hull uh, repair, we can get a we can get that back up to two thirds. And so now we'll start moving towards uh, the center of the map. This little engagement took us out of the way for a bit. It looks like most of the fun is over there. And then I realized that there's a destroyer sitting right there, an Akasuki. I'm going to take a shot here and see if we can get a hit on it. I don't think we're going to. And my next thought is I think the destroyer is going to pop out at the edge of the island there. And so we're going to get our guns reloaded and we're going to wait for it. And we'll fire a full salvo at that Akasuki destroyer there. So I'm thinking, wait for it, wait for it, and knowing what? He just disappeared. So I'm thinking, is he going to pop out again? Am I going to see him? He's going to come my way? I'm being spotted by him, but unfortunately, he's out of my, uh, he's, he's in his concealment, so I can't see him. That's unfortunate. All right, so we're going to ignore him now. We're going to head over towards shore. And if we look at the top there, the right-hand side, you can see we've already got 85,000 in damage from that first engagement. Over a hundred secondary hits there. Man, that was a lot of fun. We've got our two sinkings, a bunch of torp hits, a couple of a number of fires, incapacitations, and a number of main battery strikes. Yeah, that's this is what I'm talking about. This is why I think people like the Sharn Horse so much. But anyways, this is why I like the Sharn Horse a lot. Because sometimes you can do this stuff. Oh, we're gonna move along here, and I think our next uh opponent is going to be a New Mexico. We're going to go up against, we're going to go tangle with a New Mexico battleship next. Just cutting along the shoreline here. As we get some distance between us and that Akasuki. The Akazuki wants us, he's going to have to come after us. And there is the New Mexico. So we're going to pull our turrets onto him. We're going to angle our ship towards the New Mexico now, and we are going to make a beeline to the New Mexico with some more aggressive play here. You want, yeah, because you're going to get a heck of a lot more accurate with the ship when you get in closer. And like, and in my opinion, I think the Sharn Horse shines when you're in close quarters combat. Like that, uh, New Mexico might well be an armored tank, but uh, it can't match the, uh, the Sharni and um, maneuverability. And turret turn rates when you get in close. So my thought here right now is that the New Mexico is going to continue along the back side of the island there. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to make a turn here, and I'm going to meet him on the other side. So we're going to uh, cut to the left here. Now I am still thinking about the, uh, the destroyer that could be around here somewhere. I'm not too worried about it. 
Now, the one thing I'm looking forward to is I'm in that bureau project right now with, uh, in order to get the, um, the Sharn Horst uh, Arctic Camel. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to probably do a video with the uh, Sharni in a battle with the Arctic Camel on because I think that Arctic Camel is going to look so sharp on here. All right, now we're going to cut around the corner here. This is what I like about having some speed in your ship because you can reposition like this. You got kind of cruiser speed here, which is really nice. Now I'm thinking, ah, he didn't come all the way down here, so he's still pretty much I'm thinking, where the heck is he? Did he turn around and he started getting out of here? Or is he just kind of stopped in the water? And we look at it, he's pretty much stopped himself there. He's waiting. So we're going to take some shots in there. He got us uh, with a very minor hit there. Now we're going to put the torps in the water. We do have 6.7 kilometer torps on here. We cut him in a tight formation. With the hopes that um, he will continue backing up into them. Secondary is opening up now, giving us a, another fire there, which is great. Our will to rebuild is in operation because that cruiser must be close by. Here we go, opening up some more secondary hits here. Now, once we get in close enough, we'll, we'll utilize the torpedoes again. But well, he's giving us a nice broadside here. I, I do appreciate that. That just makes the Sharn Horse job a lot easier here. Now, I'm just waiting. Here he goes. There's his shells right there, right smack into my bow. Didn't have my bow angled enough there. Well, uh, we got the reload on him because we reload pretty darn quick. Now, we got one more. If we could hit him with uh, maybe one or two salvos. Now, we hit my turret there. He did the right thing and went after my turrets. Mind you, I've got the torpedoes. And so, we are now going to throw some torps into him. In a moment, I guess. I thought I was going to do that, but I didn't. I end up shooting the, uh, the shells again at him. And I'm going to wait for my, uh, my other turret that was knocked out to return. And we take the shot, and we get our third sinking there. And just as we're doing this, my uh, secondary is opening up on that Algier there. We're going to throw torps in the water directly at it. I'm thinking, that, yeah, I'll probably dodge that. Or go down the middle of those tight torps. So we're going to throw our shells at it too. And uh, we might, and I think we catch the torpedo right on the head of the bow, and we get that sinking too. That's our fourth one there, and pretty much that's the end of the match. It goes on for a bit after that, where it gets a little bit boring. So I just edit it there to the end, and we ended up losing the match though. Mind you, the Sharni here got 147,000 in damage. We're first on the leaderboard, which is great there. And economy-wise, we made over uh, 600,000 in credits. That's the great thing about those tier six ships. And we did a whole bunch of things there, including uh, a heck of a lot of secondary battery hits. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this uh, interesting, aggressive play of the Sharni, please give me a like. And of course, it'd be wonderful if you subscribe for future videos on my channel. Other than that, this is Spot Gift Gamer. I'll see you on the seas next time. Today's high is 57 degrees. Tonight's air power covers with the lowest stage of the